see it in about an hour. Okay, got started. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the 0305 final review. I'm Mrs. Larson, and Mr. Bagos will join us later. Can you help me out? All right, we did a fraction review, so I'm not going to cover too much with fractions. That's online, the fractions on YouTube. I, I did throw in some fractions for our geometry problems. We can review those. All right, so the first problem is pertaining to percents. Write three sixteenths as a percent. All right, now I know that, you know people learn different ways or taught different ways, but for this one, there's pretty much one way to do it. I was going to set up the proportion method for solving. Is anyone familiar with the proportion? Yeah. You say N over 100 for the percent, because percent means per 100, equals, and then your fraction that you have. Now you might not think of using proportion for this method. You remember the table, we have a chart that's, that gives you a fraction, and then you convert it to a decimal, and then you convert it to a percent? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you could also, what, what, should, what if you have a fraction, this is 3 sixteenths, how, how do you convert it to a decimal? Okay, we're going to divide. And then we will convert it to a percent. Okay, but the proportion method is a little bit easier. So I'll show you the two different ways. And then uh, we'll just, just for this one, two different ways. Because you have a fraction and you're converting it to a percent. Now also think about what makes sense. 3 over 16. 3 is pretty far apart from the number 16, right? Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a small percent, don't you think? The relationship of your numerator to your denominator. If, if the numerator was 8, 8 over 16, what would your answer be? Half, Half right? So this is going to be less than a half, 50%, right? So that will help you eliminate some of your choices on your final level choice. Hey, I know that's too big. So think about doing that, narrow it down. And then we have to watch the decimal point. All right, with the proportion method, you have equal signs. So since we have equal signs, how do we solve? Okay, you can cross multiply. It's only because you have equal signs. All right, so I'll do my variable first. So that will be 16n equals, and this is easy multiplication, 3 times 100. So see, with the proportion, you, you're uh, usually if you have 100 in the denominator, you cross multiply with the numerator, and that's easy math, right? Your decimal points after the number 3, so you just add two zeros because you multiply by 100. And then the last step, you're, you're studying chapter 11, right? Yes. You know, you were already doing chapter 11 right here. What's our last step? Divide, Divide by 16. Y'all didn't, didn't call that a variable, though, until you got to chapter 11, right? So y'all are already doing it. Of course, 11.4 is a lot more steps. So the last step is to divide by 16. All right, so this, so you got to find my room. So I'll say 300. Remember, the numerator is always in the house, right? Right. Don't want to get that mixed up. And then, you know, make sure your answer is making sense. You can put a decimal point after your 300 because we want this to stay 300, right? And then it's okay to add a zero. Because remember, with percents, this could go on, right? Mm -hmm. You are dividing by a whole number, so bring your, percent, your decimal point straight up. So you have to watch the lining up of your numbers, right? Okay, does 16 go into 30? Okay, one time. So that one needs to go above the first zero there. You can't be messy, we're dealing with decimals. So if you're, if you're not watching the lining up, then you'll miss your decimal point, put it in the wrong place. 
1 times 16 is 16. We subtract and get 14. At, you know, check it with addition because any little math error is going to mess everything up, right? Then you bring down the next number. Okay, what should we try for 16 into 140? Now you can round it 16 to 20. See? And, okay, and think about how many times does 2 go into 14 if we rounded this to 20? 7. Now this is 16 though. So if 20 goes into this 7 times, I think I need to try an 8. Because I this is a little, you know, smaller. But you know. And then do, don't I want a zero? Maybe we'll go evenly. You know, eight times, well, I'm thinking about five. Okay, so I'm going to try eight, and then if that doesn't work, I'll try seven. You know, how you're just trying to get a range. Okay, so eight times six is 48. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So y'all let me know if I'm making a mistake, because um, I'm the nervous one. <laughs> I did it ahead of time. But, you know, sometimes you can't look at your notes good because your eyes, you're like, where was it? <laughs> okay, we're going to subtract. So you do your borrowing. So that will be 12. Remember, when, you're, when you divide, when you subtract, that number has to be smaller than what you're dividing by. Have you ever found that mistake that was bigger? And you, had, you put a 1 up there and you had more numbers than you needed? Okay, so make sure it's smaller than what you're dividing by. And then you can bring down the next number, and I need to put my 8 up here, because 8 worked, didn't it? Mm -hmm. See, if this was, uh, if I had gotten 17 here, that means I should have tried 9. So I need to go back and do a 9, because it, it goes more. I want to ask you a question on that. Um, when you started off with the 16 and the 300, you don't put a zero up there that 16 doesn't go into, I mean, uh, you, can, you can, but a so zero in front of a number is not necessary. So, okay. You know, okay. Okay. Because I would probably drop it later. Okay. Okay, now 16 into 120. Now, 16 times 8 is 128. So now I need to try a Small 7, one. right? Yeah. So it's good to leave these over here to see what you've tried. 7 times 6 is 42, and 7 plus 4 is 11. So this would be 112. So I put my 7 up here. 7 times 16 is 112. Subtract, and that just that's an 8, right? Show my borrowing. All right, so I hope this ends soon. Keep going until it goes evenly. And that goes, there's my 5. 5 times 6 ends in a 0. And don't you feel better if it goes evenly? Now, on multiple choice, if y'all saw an, a choice with a line above it, what does that mean? It repeats. So you would know if you're on the right track. Something repeated. Now, what's nice about the proportion method? I'm done. My decimal point's in the right place, and I found the percent right away. If you just go and divide, you can just go and divide. What does this line mean right here? Divide. So you would say 3 divided by 16, but your decimal point would be after the 3. So then it would be above, you know, in front of the 1. So then you would have to remember to multiply by 100. So using the proportion method, you're multiplying by 100 first. So then you have your answer right away. And not, because a lot of people forget to move it. And that's one of our choices. I mean, that could be a choice on the midterm. Point 1875, 18.75, yeah. So you got to watch your decimal point. And what would make sense? Put it back into the, we'll look back into the problem where we had three sixteenths. Does that make sense then to be about 18, 19%? We said it was going to be small, right? Mm -hmm. It's less than half. But would you want 0 0.1? Is it going to be that small? Mm -hmm. You know, so pay attention to the decimal point and make sure your answer makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to the next one. Quick question. Okay, sorry. Is it just okay to divide? 16 into 100 and find out what 1% is and then find it about the top number. That's what I tend to do. Okay. If you get the same answer, that'd be good. But I don't, I don't want to teach it that way. <laughs> okay, so I'll talk to you later. Yeah, that, but we really want you to know about the cross multiplying and dividing as you get into other things.
All right, the next one says, what is 14% of 50? All right, now this one is the easiest, right? When you have your percent and your base, that's the easiest, because what does of mean? Times. Of means to multiply. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do with this answer? And you can do the proportion method. I'm going to show, I said I wasn't going to show both ways. But for this one I am because you have to, oh, 305, final review. Okay, we have some more reviews. Because, you know how you have to find interest later on in the chapter percents? So you would just multiply your finding your interest. You know, you put so much money in the bank. Okay, so let me show the multiplying first. Now, order and multiplication doesn't matter. So I like, if something has a zero in it, I would put that on the bottom. Isn't it easy to multiply by zero? Of means to multiply. So 14% of 50, we're going to be multiplying. And I'm going to get a smaller answer than 50 or a bigger answer. You're taking part of 50. You have 50. I want 14% of it. Smaller. Smaller. Eliminate those answers that don't make sense. So, I have, I don't see how many, y'all multiply by that row of zeros? I'll just put a zero and then start multiplying by the five. Five times four is 20. So that would be seven. Now, where does your decimal point go? Behind the seven. Okay, this is moved over two places. So this one has a whole number, so there's no counting. So all together, two places. Is that why you started off with a point fourteen because you knew you were going to move it over? No, it was good. Okay. Well, you always have to convert your percent to a decimal. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry for not explaining all that. But remember, this is a review. So I hope I don't have to reteach. Yeah. Um, so you convert your percent to a decimal, so that means you move it two places. You're dividing by 100. And that lets us so that we can work our problem. Now the proportion okay. method. Well, you cross multiply and then divide by something. Okay, we're going to do that next. Yes. Okay, the proportion method. Now, see, you need to know this though when it's the easiest, because mm -hmm. sometimes you're asked to find the interest, so you just want to multiply, because you've got your time times your rate mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. your principal. Okay. All right. If you want to keep doing the proportion method, then it's n over 100, and I'm going to talk about this in a word problem, it's is over uh-oh, okay? It says what is, so do we know the is? No. So that gets the variable. Do we know the percent? Okay, so that's 14 over 100. When you are writing your percent as a fraction, drop your decimal point, right? My decimal point is right here after the 14. I'm going to divide by 100, so I get back to that number. If I, you know, I get back to the decimal equivalents. Remember, percent means per 100, so just put 14 over 100. Equals, do we know the is? So that will be my x, or whatever variable you like to use. And I know my of, 50. Is over of. Okay. So then we do the proportion like we did up here, number one. Cross multiply. So we have 100x equals, and then 50 times 14. Well, I had to do that already, right? Right. And I got 700. Now, dividing by 100 will put your decimal point in the right place. So maybe you didn't know this rule for decimal, but you have to move it over. So then you would want the proportion method, right? Okay, we have the number 700. So the decimal point is where? Right here after it. You're dividing by 100, so it's mental math, right? So you move it one place to the left when you divide by 10, two places when you divide by 100. So you get the same thing. If you follow your rules for decimals, right? Sure. 
Then make sure your answer makes sense. I'll raise this up a little bit. 14% of 50. Okay, what's half of 50? 25. I'm, I'm at 14%, right? So I'm less. So does this make sense? We got seven. Okay, so make sure your answer makes sense. Okay, watch those decimals. Would 70 make sense if you put your decimal point in the wrong place? Okay. Okay, continuing with percents. Raise this up. Okay, we're going to do the proportion method. N over 100 equals, what was that? Is over up. Over up. Do I know my percent? No. What percent? Okay, we're looking for the percent. So um, I, we could just leave it as N over 100, right? When you're looking for the percent. What is my is? Okay, 75. And my of? 60. Now, what do you notice about this problem? The numerator is bigger than the denominator. So what does that mean about my percent? You went over 100%, didn't you? Okay, so we're going to... We need an answer bigger than 100%. So you could go over 100%. You've got a bonus question on your test. You got everything right plus the bonus. I was expecting an estimated, you know, 10 people in here. Hey, I went over my estimation, right? We're like goal. Okay, got it. Went over 100%. Okay, so y'all can go over a goal, right? You set and go over. So we're over 100% because our numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay, we have equal signs, so we can cross multiply. So I start with my variable because it's easier when it's on the left. Have y'all noticed that when you started chapter 11? Mm -hmm. You like your variable on the left? And then we have easy multiplication. When you have a whole number and you multiply by 100, what do you do with that whole number? You just add a zero when you multiply by 10, another zero when you multiply by 100. So that's why the proportion method is kind of, you know, it's nice. So far, easy math. Now, there's a decimal involved. You know, you'd have to move your decimal point two places. But our decimal point's right here. A decimal is involved. It's at the end of a whole number. So I moved it two places, and that's by adding two zeros. Now, what's my last step? Divide, Divide by 60. <coughs> Now, do you know what you can do to make this division a little bit easier? Okay, you can cross out a zero in each. That's, what is that doing? That's dividing by 10, reducing early. That way, one digit's easier, right? So I have 750 now divided by 6. Where, where's my decimal point in the number 750? It's right here. So bring it up in case you have to keep dividing. I always you know, like to put it, so don't say, oh, oops, oops, I forgot. Because if you had a zero, we don't want to change that number. It's supposed to stay 750. I put my decimal point. Now, is it still 750? Okay, so it's put your decimal point and then add zero. All right, set six, does six go into seven? One time. So you want that one above the seven. You don't want to go and put it above the five. That's going to mess the lining up of your numbers. Okay, one times six is six. Subtract and get a one. Bring down the next number. Six goes into 15. Two. Two times. Two times six is 12. Subtract and get a three. Bring down the next number. Six goes into 30. Five, five times. And we are done. So you don't need that decimal point. It was just a safe key so you don't, if you, in case you needed it. This is a whole number, so the decimal point is understood, right? What was I looking for? Percentage. The percent. With the proportion method, you have it. If you use the other method where you divide, then you have to move it two places. So on your final, Look for that percent that's over 100 because 
your numerator is bigger than the denominator. Good? What if you had a, um, this cross out the, on the very first one, you see 60 over n, the denominator was 60 n, and then 60, I mean, the numerator 60 n, and the denominator 60. What if you had to draw a line through the, I mean, I know you did the, Oh, like right here? Yeah. Yes. Would it matter? Um, so no, when, well, yeah. this is six, 60 divided by 60 is 1. So that's all you oh, can do. Oh, okay. Because you want n by itself. Right, okay. Okay, so I should put probably n equals. Okay. That's your, very, that's your right. uh, coefficient, you know, from chapter 11 you are right. working on. Right. Same number divided by the same number is 1. Okay. okay, thanks for bringing that out. It's easy to overlook some things. Okay, so the next one. Number four. What are we looking for here? Six percent of what is 18? Okay, we have our percent, right? So that will be written as six over 100 equals, now what do we say? Is it of over is or is over of? Okay. So we have our is, which is 18 over, okay, that we're, what we're looking for, the of. So whatever variable you like to use. And we are the same routine, right? Once you have your proportion set up. Cross multiply, if you like to do your x first, so it's on the left. Again, we have a whole number. 18 times 100 is? Uh, 18. So just add two zeros. And then the last step divide. is to divide. So here I'll put, now see, you, you brought it to my attention, so I know to go over it. Six divided by six is one, one so we have x by itself. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So we have 1,800 divided by 6. So your first number will be above the 8, which is 3, three times 6 is 18. Mm -hmm. And then how many zeros do I add? 2. That's why it's nice to be able to line it up. So this answer is 300. 300. Now let's see if it makes sense. Put your 300 here. 6% of 300. Wow, only 6%? So it's not going to be, so that's not a very big number, is it? Is 18. So does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. We need a big number there. Mm -hmm. You're working, you have 18, you took, took part of a number and got 18. So we need something big there because we were only working with 6% of it. Okay. Now going, doing some word problems where we don't have the is and the of. Do y'all remember, this is asking for the percent of increase. Do you remember those steps? We need to look for the, oh sorry. Did someone say Ms. Larson? Question? Oh, you got, you got it answered. The amount of change. You heard of that? Mm -hmm. or what's the change? All right. A local apartment complex raised its monthly rent. Okay, we're used to this these days, right? Mm -hmm. From eight hundred fifty dollars to nine hundred eighty-six dollars. Find the percent of increase. Now you don't want to work with these two numbers. These numbers are close together. If two numbers are close together, that means that's a big percent, right? Okay, you have 100 points on a test. Don't you want to get as close as you can to 100 to make a 100? Oh, yeah. So if you got 99 right, you made a 99. Mm -hmm. So if I work with these two numbers, that's going to be a big percent. Is that increase <coughs> really that big? Is it a 90% increase? Yeah. Okay, so you want to... Find the amount of change between those numbers. 
So what does that mean? Subtract. Subtract them. Then the answer from your subtraction problem is the number I want to work with. All right. So we got, of course, order and subtraction matters. So we need to put the 986 first. Minus the 850. Okay? I want to know the difference. What the difference between these numbers to know how much I have to pay more. Okay, so what do you get when you subtract? 6, 3, 1, 136. Yay, no borrowing. <laughs> All right. Now, as we were doing the proportion method, you have your percent. Instead of thinking of is a rub, have you heard of the amount? over the base? Yes. Okay. So this is our amount that we found. So that's going to go in the numerator. The base is your original number. The base is what you're taking part of. So this is N over 100. Let me go ahead and bring my paper up. We're done with number four. So I want to work with the number 136. And what was the original number before I had the increase? 850. Remember, it's if an increase, then you go with the smaller number, right? 850 is, was the original number. Okay, now do you see why we had to subtract? I'm, I'm, you know, you don't want to say just. Okay, that's a lot of money. Okay, but 136. So that's not that big of an increase. Are we at 50% of an increase? Now, what's half of 850? 425. Well, so you're not, it wasn't a 50% increase. It's not that big. So that's, so that's why we're subtracting. Because okay. the percentage is not that big. So, okay, so look at the different, look at these numbers. The relationship of them. Okay, so we've got some bigger numbers to work with. Same steps, though, once you have your proportion set up. <coughs> Cross multiply. Okay, bring it up a little bit more. So I have 850 in, whatever variable you wanted to use, equals 136. What do I do with that number when I multiply by 100? Add two zeros. Okay, uh, see, if, if it happened to be 13.6, then you'd move your decimal point two places and you would just have one zero, right? You start where the decimal point is. The decimal point's after the 136, so one, two, so I have to add two zeros. Everybody good with that? All right, then we, well, what's the last step? Divide. Divide 850 on both sides. What is 850 divided by 850? One. Now, don't say nothing, because then you oh, miss it. N. Oh, so we have N by itself. And if you want to put a 1, you can't, right? Now, this is similar to the other one. Do y'all want to reduce first? You can cross out a 0 in each, only 1. That's dividing by 10. So I have 1,360 now divided by 85. All right, now, where would my first digit go? Over the six. Over the six. You need to put a line. Because, you know, it's kind of scary. Is this going to go evenly, or do I need to keep dividing? So you'd put a zero, if you, I mean, a decimal point, if you need to keep dividing and add a zero. Now, this is kind of hard. I cover up the five when I'm trying to decide. I cover up the ones digit, and I say, how many times is eight going to 13? So it just goes one time, one time. right? I know because that kind of helps you pick a number if it was harder, you know, if it was bigger than this. Because two times eight is what? Sixteen. So I'd have to have something bigger than a sixteen right there. So that's why I just look at the one, the number in the tens place to get an idea of what to divide by. Okay, so we're safe with a one. I don't have a pencil to erase. Yes. <laughs> okay, that goes above the six. So this would be eighty-five. Subtract. 51. And that's going to be 51. Thank you. A 51 is a prime number. And I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It's a composite number. Most of you think it's prime, right? <laughs> 5 plus 1 is 6. 
Three you like to see? I don't know, I just see that 51 thing. Can I pause? All right, bring down, you know, I've been teaching too long. Add the zero. Now remember, when you subtract, you want that number to be smaller than what you're dividing by. Add a zero. Oh, now here. All right, cover up your five. How many times does eight go into 51? Eight times seven is 56. So seven's going to be too big. So let's try the six. Of course, you would do this on the side of your paper. And guess what? Six times five ends in a zero. So maybe this will go evenly. Eight times six is 48. 49, 50, 51. Mm -hmm. And don't you feel better when it goes evenly? Mm -hmm. So what is our percent of increase? 16%. 16%. So see, that wasn't that bad. But, you know, we don't want any kind of increase. But so that's why you don't want to work with these two numbers. That would be a big increase. We did the proportion method, so you have your percent right away. This was our safekeeping to put a decimal point in a zero in case it kept on going. Because I see people forgetting their decimal point, you know. And to help you remember to line up your numbers. Because on the final, we could have 1.6%, you know, 16%, 0 0.16, because people will forget to move their decimal point. They're doing, you know, not the, they're not doing the proportion. So watch. Make sure your answer makes sense. All right, that, we're going to move on to the next chapter that deals with mean, median, and mode. And here are some fractions that will help us for you. The mean is the, another word for average. The median is the middle number, and the mode the one that occurs the most. <laughs> All right, so I have fractions, and I need to find the average. So how do we find the average? Yeah. We've got to add them up. Okay, so we put them in a row here with an addition sign. And how do we add fractions? Least common denominator. Okay, you have to find the least common denominator. Now, a lot of people forget, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to write this like an order of operation problem. Because if I just add, a lot of people are done. I mean, that's finding the total. Is that finding the average? Mm -hmm. So once you find your answer, what should you do? Divide by how many there are. How many are there? Four. Four. So that would be setting it up as an order of operation problem, which you're supposed to know, and you're not leaving out that last step. Do what's inside the parentheses first, right? You want to add first. 12, 6, 8, and 3. What would be a common denominator? Okay, 24. I usually write these like vertically. So however you're used to writing to get your equivalent fraction. Okay, so I'm looking at the two thirds. Three went to twenty-four. So what was what did you multiply by? Eight. Okay, so maybe I'll use a different color here. So you're saying three times eight to get that twenty-four. So what do you have to do to the two? Okay, and 2 times 8 is 16. 16. Okay, so this is another name for 2 thirds. All right, 8 times 3, three is 24, so 5 times 3 is 15. So 5 eighths is another name for it is 15 over 24. 6 times 4 is 24, so 1 times 4 is 4. See the relationship? 4 is far apart from 24, so 1 is far apart from 6. 5 is pretty close to 8, so 15 is pretty close to 24. See if you might catch any math errors. And the last one, I need to multiply by 2 over 2. So 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, carry down the problem. So we're ready to add. Now just add carefully. If you need to use your fingers, use your fingers because we don't want to make an error. I'm going to group those two first. Okay, 16 plus 15, that would be 31. 14 plus 4 is 28. 
right? So, you know, you order and addition doesn't matter. You have the associative property, you have the commutative property. So I just put these two together. I put these two together by showing you. So what is our final answer? 59 for the numerator and the denominator is? Let's double check that one. Yeah, 24. It's 18. 14 and 18. Thank you. It's on my scratch paper. I never caught it. Okay, so that'd be 49. Okay, no erasers. Write it over here. Okay, but well, thank you. I'm just seeing if y'all are following along. You got time to talk. Okay, so that is my total. And some people will convert that to a mixed number. And wait a minute, we're supposed to be finding the average. How can you get something bigger? So what's the last step? Divide by four. Divide by four. Okay, and then, oh, so here's your review on division. Okay, same, change, flip. Okay, so the, the number after the division sign is the one that you take the reciprocal of. Since your first number was a fraction, you take the reciprocal of four and get one fourth. Okay, is everybody good with that? So, uh, now remember this is a multiplication sign. You can cross simplify, but you can't cross multiply. So don't get that confused when we're doing proportions. All right, but I can't see any cross simplifying. So numerator times numerator, and denominator times denominator. Okay, 96. And that is the mean. Okay, so I'm not sure if you'll have it right on your answer key or not. Put that if I had something different because of my math there. I was over here just adding like I knew was adding. <laughs> okay. Now we go found the mean, now the median. So we so this was good. We have all our fractions <coughs> with a common denominator so that you can tell which one's the middle number. But in order to tell which one's the middle number, I need to put them in order. order. Okay, so let's see. Small. This one, so I need to split. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep my common denominators, though, because this is a longer problem, isn't it? The, if it's an odd set of numbers, then it's the middle number, right? But when you have an even one, what do you have to do? Find the average of the two middle ones? All right. So if I put those in order right, we're going to find the average of 14 over 24 plus 15 over 24. Okay, so we add those together and get 29 over 24. And what do we have to do? Divide by 2. Divide by two which is multiply by, two. by the reciprocal. So what do you get there? 29 over 48. So that is the middle. No, you would go back over here to your fractions, though, and write that down. Well, no, we, no, that's sorry. That's good. I just was wondering. So y'all paid attention to, like, which one was bigger over here? Okay. Uh, let's see. What do we need next? The mode. Okay, now that's when you go back to your original fractions to write instead of the common denominator ones. Do we have a mode? No. no. Okay, no mode. I don't know if they show up. Okay, so this is the median and no mode. Okay, so that was a good review, a little bit of fractions, right? Okay, and then part of that test that you take with mean, median, mode, chapter seven is graphs and converting inches to feet and feet to yards and stuff like that. So let's write down those measurements. When, you, when we start converting, what do we need to know? 12 <laughs> inches equals one foot. And three feet is one yard. So how many inches are in a yard? So multiply those two together. 
for 36 inches in a yard. Then we jump to one mile. How many feet are in a mile? 5,280 feet. Very good. 5,280 feet in a mile. All right, if you wanted to find how many yards are in a mile, divide 5,280 by three. 1,760 uh -huh. feet and one mile. Okay, and then I was going to use the unit conversion method for converting. Okay, we have inches to feet. All right, how many inches are in a foot? So we can look at that. 12 inches equals one foot. Okay, I'm converting inches to feet. So you can also kind of look at it like this. If 12 inches are in a foot, do I want my answer to be bigger than 156 or smaller? Smaller. Smaller. So if you want a smaller answer, what do you need to do? Smaller answer, get you divide. Okay? Now, the unit conversion, I don't know if some of y'all practice this, you take 156 inches, put it over one, and then you put your inches in the denominator because you want to convert it to feet. How many inches are in a foot? Twelve, Twelve inches in one foot. So do some of y'all practice that? Yes. And then that helps you to see if you're going to be dividing or multiplying. You can also just look to see, you know, 12 inches are in one foot. I want a smaller answer, so I'm going to divide. What do we divide by? 12. 12. So this helps to see it if you know that method. So 156 divided by 12. 13. Okay, 13 feet. Okay, very good. I'll do one more, and then Mr. Bogoski come up. Okay, so we're converting yards to feet. Okay, so you got, oh, lots of thinking to do here, isn't there? How many yards, let's see, how many feet are in a yard? So it's three. Okay, so there's three, I should put one yard, okay, three feet. Kind of got it back to three. Three feet is in one yard. Okay, so, I'm, so I need, look at the yards. 64. This one is bigger. One yard. Three feet equals one yard. So feet, what do you want that to be? Smaller than 64 or bigger than 64? Look at your big proportions. Bigger. Okay, good. You know, feet, you know, think of a ruler. 12 inches is one foot. So you got a ruler. So a yard, think of that yardstick. So we need more feet, don't we? Okay, also, if you want to use the unit conversion to help you think of that. You write as a fraction, 64 over 1 equals, you want to cross simplify out your yards, so the yards goes into the denominator, and you're converting it to feet. So this will be your final answer. So there's three feet in one yard. So this lets you know, what are you doing? Multiplying. Multiplying. <coughs> If it was in the denominator, you'd be dividing. So 64 times 3. 192. All right. And then put your unit. If your teeth, but on the final, it will be there. Okay, so memorize these numbers. So I know when you're studying for a test, you've got lots of numbers, formulas. <coughs> the next, oh, talk about formulas, numbers and formulas. <laughs> It's a geometry question. So y'all doing good? Yeah. All right, so we're talking about the rectangle. Do you remember the formulas for area and perimeter? Which one's that? Okay. So I'm going to write those down. What's the other one? Perimeter? 
uh, two times length plus two times width, or two times length. Two L plus two W? Plus two w. That's usually the way we write it. We can also use the parentheses. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so what's that one going to be? If we use the parentheses, then it's parentheses two L plus W. All right, which one do you want to do first, area or perimeter? Area. Area, alphabetical order. Okay, so we need to multiply the length and the width, and it says that the length is six and a half feet. So we have six and one half times a width of three and three quarters feet. That was the first problem we have with this. You cannot multiply mixed numbers. So what do we do? We're going to convert them into fractions. Mm -hmm. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13. 13. The denominator will stay the same. And over here, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15. 54. Okay. Now, multiply fractions. We check. Is there any cancellation? No. Not in this case. Okay. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom. Well, the bottom is easy. 2 times 4 is 8. And 15 times 13. We'll have to go off to the side here. What do we get? 395. 395. 395. Oh. Over 8. Okay, so we got 195 over 8. Are we allowed to stop? No. no. Why not? That's an improper fraction. So we need to divide it. Okay. So go off to the side here. We got to have 8. We'll go on two times, right? 16, remainder of 3, bring down the 5, 8 and the 35. 8 times 4 is 32. So we have a remainder of 3. Okay. Now, since we're doing mixed numbers, unlike the decimals, we're not going to put our zeros in and keep going until it works out, right? So we're going to write our answer as a mixed number because the original problem was a mixed number. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be what, 24. Yeah, 3 eighths. Is that the final answer? Just 24 and 3 eighths? Yes. Feet. Feet? Feet. 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 Square. Feet. 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 Square feet. Area. Square feet. Okay. Yeah, area is always measured in square units. Perimeter is measured in regular units. Since we have the mixed numbers, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to use the second formula. Mm -hmm. Okay. So L plus W, so we got six and a half. And three and three quarters. Now we could go off to the side. Those numbers are relatively small, so how about we just convert them into fractions? Remember, we need to have a common denominator either way. So. <coughs> Six and a half would become what? Six times two is 12, plus one is? 13 over two. 13 over two, we'll leave a space. Three times four is 12. 15 over four. Again, I'll leave a space. Because we need to get a common denominator. What's it going to be for this problem? Four. 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 Now, this one's already 4, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to multiply this one by 2 over 2. Okay, so now we have 2, and this is now what, 26? Mm -hmm. Over 4, and 15. Over 4. over 4, if we put those together, we get what? Um, Regular 2, remember any number can be made a fraction by putting a 1 under it. So my 2 out front here, I changed it into a 2 over 1 because I got a fraction that needs multiplying. Right? So I can 
cancel across. Yeah, two. Multiply what's left. We're going to have 41 over 2. Is that my final answer? No. It's an improper fraction, right? It's reduced, but it's improper, so we need to convert it. Okay. So 2 goes into 41 how many times? Two times? Two times. Two. Okay, we need to go off to the side, right? Two goes into four two times. And then we have a remainder of one, so that's, but two does not go into one, so we put a zero, and then there's no more numbers to bring down, right? So it's going to be 20 and one half. 20 and one half. B. Okay. Don't forget the units. Right. Area of a triangle? What's the formula there? Area equals um, one half base times one half. One half base times the other. There, and we have a base of 19 and a height of 14. So we have the one half that's part of the formula. Now the base is 19, but because I already have a fraction, how about I write that as 19 over 1? And the 14 will also be written as 14 over 1. Canceling I can do? 2 and 14. 2 and the 14. So I want to bring it up a little bit, Alan. Bring it up? Yeah. Sorry. I'll just start writing on the back of the camera. <clears throat> All right. So we're just left with the 19 and the 7 now, right? The denominator is completely gone? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. okay, so we go off to the side. We got 19, we got 7. What's that? 133. So our area is equal to 133. Is that it? Yeah. What's square. missing? Square yards. Square yards. Square square. 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 We say square yards, but we usually write the square. Yeah. Okay. So. <coughs> All right. So we're okay there. the area and circumference of a circle that has a radius of 30 inches. Okay, so <clears throat> what are the formulas there? Area is equal to pi r squared and the circumference, which is what we call the perimeter of a circle, 2 pi regular r. Remember, we said area was measured in square units. So which one gets the square? The area formula. Because again, if both of them have a 2, both of them have a pi, both of them have an r. It's just a matter where you put it. OK. So we have a choice. Sometimes we use 22 sevenths for pi. And here they're telling us to use the decimal, 3.14. So we substitute in the area formula. We have 3.14 and the radius squared, that would be 30. And that gets squared, right? Now, order of operation says do the square first. What does it mean to square 30? The answer is not. It means 30 times 30. So if you want to write that out, you can go ahead and do that. But that's one of those easy numbers. Can you do it in your head? 900. 30 times 30 is 900. Okay. So then we just go off to the side. What's that 100 going to do? Right? 
900 is really 100 times 9. So what is that going to do? Having two zeros at the end. Well, it adds to the Notice we have a decimal here. What does multiplying by 100 do? So this is the same as 314 times 9. Are you ready to raise it up? Okay, so we go off to the side. What do we get? 2826. 2826? Mm -hmm. 2826. Something squared. Inches. Inches squared. Okay. This pen binder would just be right in front. Okay, so that was the area. What about circumference? Well, the formula says 2. And we got our pi, 3.14. And R is? Radius times 15. 30. Okay. Now we have our commutative property for multiplication. So which combination do you want to do first? Do you want to do 2 times 3.14 or do you want to do 2 times 30? Yeah. How about the 2 times 30? Can you just go 1.19? One one we could. Or not? Or yeah, we can do that. What I'm saying is we, we have a choice. The decimal. Oh, I feel what you're saying. Or do you want to do the 2 times 3.14? There's no carryover, so that's easy, right? So it's just going to become 6.28 times 30. Off to the side. 6.28 30. We move our decimal point in two places, so it will be there. Circumference is equal to 88.4 inches. Okay, regular inches, right? Okay. Number 12, we have a triangle now. Depending on which part of the triangle we're focusing on, that matter which formula we need. A lot of people can remember that there's 180 degrees in a triangle, but the degrees refer to the angles and the numbers here. Are those the angles? No, those are the sides. So which formula refers to the sides of the triangle? The Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And very important, C is always which side? The longest side, and it's also opposite the right angle. Now, we, we didn't specify it, but normally there should be an indication. We have the square in the corner that indicates that it's a right triangle. Or we can put the measurement of 90 degrees. All right. Uh, I like my short side to be A, but if you mix up A and B, that doesn't matter. So if we pick the short side to be A, that would be the 9. That's going to be squared to 9. And the B value is 12, and that's going to be squared, and that's going to equal C squared. So order of operation says we do the squares before we do addition. So what is 9 times 9? 81. What is 12 times 12? 1. Some disagreement there. 1. 44. Okay. Okay, so, so when you're doing that, you don't have to, it doesn't matter whether 9 square become A or B. Right. You can just choose the side. A and B you can mix up, but don't mix up C. Right? C is the one that matters. C is always going to be the longest side, and it's also going to be the side opposite to the right angle. Okay, so what's 181 uh, plus 144? 
Okay. So we're going to get 225 is equal to C squared. Okay, well, that's C squared. We just want C though, right, by itself. So we got a couple choices. Not they're, they're going to have the uh, square root table? No. no? We'll give a per it'll be a perfect square. Okay. So any guesses as to what that one is? That's one of the relatively easy ones. 15. If you're not sure, you can check it out. You can multiply 15 times 15, and you are going to get 225. So that says that the C value is going to be 15. So I get the units. So make sure it's bigger than those legs, but not too much bigger. Remember, we said that C is always the longest side, so we got 9, 12, and we just found it to be 15. So 15 is the largest side. Okay, so we're uh, going to finish the other two problems and we have the answer key. If you could complete your evaluation, and we sure do appreciate coming and hope you do good on your final.